Okay, Theory Supply Students, uh, part two, I'm going to show you the form I'm going to use to fill out while you're doing your observations so that um, I don't want to make you nervous or uncomfortable at all. Um, I will try not to do a lot of this, um, a lot of writing while I'm with you so that um, it doesn't cause you to feel like I'm documenting your every move because <laughs> I'm not and I do want to make a couple of things really clear to you first of all um, when you plan an activity like this it's very strange to go in an environment where the kids are not used to you and do something like this so if there are things that are happening with children that um, the teacher is used to dealing with, then we're going to allow the teacher in the classroom to deal with any child who um, needs any kind of attention during that time. We're just going to focus on being there, facilitating the activity, and um, I don't want you to feel like if children have a response to the activity that creates a need for attention from the teacher, that that's a problem. Um, it's just something to note, observe, and think about um, and learn from. So I don't want you to think your score or anything you do will be, a, be um, connected to how well the children behave. <laughs> That's basically what I want to say is that many student teachers are worried about that kind of thing. And I want to assure you that's not what this is about. So this here's what this is about. So you'll see, and you will get this form. So I will fill it out and send it to you um, after I have a chance to type it up. Um, so um, I'm just going to have your stated role, basically, based on what you submit on the 3rd of September, uh, excuse me, November. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be looking at, did you arrive ahead of time and set everything up? And once you got in the room, if there were any changes or updates, you were there in, in enough time that you could make those. Um, and were the materials prepared and available prior to the beginning of the activity? So um, what we don't want to be doing is running around the room at the last minute saying, oh, we forgot to bring this or something of that nature. Unless, of course, someone is sick that day <laughs> from your group, if you're doing a group, and at that point, it'll be all hands on deck and we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out how to manage whatever that person was responsible for bringing. Um, the roles of each um, planner should be clearly observed um, based on what you submit on the 3rd of November for your group, if you're in a group. If you're not in a group, these things don't apply to you um, as far as, you know, that I'm observing your roles. So what will happen is I'll have your stated role up there and I'll just be watching to see if you, you know, were able to participate that way. Um, and if not, was there a reason for it that was legitimate or did something happen? Um, so that'll just be a question I'll have is if it doesn't look like what I thought it was going to be, then I'll want to understand what happened. Um, again, not judging or, you know, evaluating, just wanting to understand and make sure you understand. Um, using the accommodations and modifications that you provided in the assignment on November 3rd, um, if they're needed for that classroom, then I'll observe those. If they're not needed, it needs to be clear to me that if they had been needed, they could be readily implemented. And if they are in implemented in another classroom, it would be clear that it would be possible. So, um, for example, on the multilingual uh, modification, I do want to at least see what words you would use and what language of origin you found them in. Um, so that's just something that would be an example of that. You may not need them that day, but I want to be able to see that you have them. Um, and then in terms of introducing the activity, I'm going to be looking for um, anything that is necessary of, for purposeful use of materials. So I have here an example. Um, this is not an ex explanation of what we're doing today. Um, 
It's just any helpful reminders and when you introduce it. Um, for example, if you're using scissors, for you do a safety check-in. So I'm not asking you to tell them here are the rules about scissors. I'm asking you to check in with them. What do you guys know about scissors? How do we keep safe when we use scissors? And then you listen. If you don't hear some things that you know you want to emphasize, then you say, well, here's something I know about scissors. And then you tell them. So we're not telling them the rules, but I want to hear in the introduction of the activity anything about the purposeful use of materials that should be included. Um, I want to see that the play during the activity was not interrupted, that children were allowed to engage with the materials purposefully. Um, introduction of other materials and resources initiated by children was included, so natural extensions of the activity are allowed and supported. So if you have a, a tub full of water and a lot of things for kids to um, you know, play with in the water, if they go and get other things and incorporate them <clears throat> or change the activity somehow as the play emerges, that you roll with that, that you're able to accommodate that and that they're not stopped from doing that. Unless, of course, it's inappropriate. <laughs> so, um, and that guiding questions are used when appropriate. And basically, those are most appropriate in response to children's initiation of conversation around the activity. So as you're listening, if you hear something that prompts you to think, oh, I can think of a good guiding question here, that you did it, that you used it appropriately. Sometimes children can play for a long time uninterrupted, and we don't need guiding questions. Um, so I want, to, want you to know that using those appropriately is part of what I'm looking at when I'm observing. So, and then, um, of course, um, because it's a 30 minute activity, we'll make a decision with the teacher about whether we're gonna leave it out or put it away and close and bring it to close. So um, how that happens, we'll just work together with the teacher on that. Um, so that's really what I wanted you to know was what I'm going to be looking at. These are lifted right out of the rubric. Um, they're, and um, so I'm trying to stay true to that rubric that you've been given as a way to evaluate. So I hope this has been helpful. And let me know if you have any questions.